White House had instructed the FDA to promote GMOs. And so the FDA created a new position specifically for Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney, to be in charge of policy at the time they were creating policy on GMOs and bovine growth hormone. Michael Taylor was in charge of that policy and said no safety testing was necessary, no labeling was necessary, and then became Monsanto's vice president and then went back to the FDA as the U.S. food czar under Obama. Now, the basis of the no testing necessary was the sentence that the agency wasn't aware of information that GMOs were considered different. But a lawsuit pioneered by Stephen Drucker, who's the author of Altered Genes, Twisted Truth, it found, <clears throat> because they had turned over 44,000 secret internal memos, the FDA did, that the overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA was exactly the opposite of what was stated in the policy. That's how we know it was a lie. The scientists said that according to the, this was a summary, almost a quote, according to the technical experts of the, ag of the agency, the process of genetic engineering is different and leads to different risks. By trying to say that there's no difference is like trying to force a square peg into a round hole. So it was not only saying that it was different, it was complaining about earlier drafts of that policy. The scientists were against the drafts. In fact, one of the scientists, Louis Pribble, said, what's become of this document? It's basically, what do I have to do to stay out of trouble type document? It reads very pro-industry, and it doesn't address the consumer concerns like unpredicted side effects. So when you read what the scientists said, you realize it was a completely unscientific policy. And then when you read what the politicians at the White House and the Human Health, Health and Human Services said, they were saying, we need to make it look like GMOs are even less different. We need to eliminate the 12 pages uh, or shorten the 12 pages on the environmental impacts. We need to indicate that it's just as precise and just as, as healthy. So as, the, as GMOs went up the political ladder, they got healthier and healthier. But the scientists said they were not they were not the same. They had unique risks and needed to be tested. During the first Bush administration, there was a deficit, a trade deficit. So Dan Quayle, the vice president, was in charge of a committee, the Council on Competitiveness. And they were convinced by probably Monsanto that GMOs would increase U.S. exports as well as domination by the U.S. of world food trade. So that was the concept, that promote GMOs to reduce the trade deficit. Well, the opposite happened. The U.S. failed to uh, export to the same degree the GMOs because so many countries were rejecting GMOs. So the export shrunk, the prices shrunk, and uh, the amount of money that had to, they had to pay for subsidies increased dramatically. I was told by a person who attended a dairy co conference where FDA Deputy Commissioner, he later became the Commissioner, Lester Crawford, gave a talk on the FDA and said that the second of the two major purposes of the FDA is to promote biotechnology. So they're mandated to promote GMOs and also to regulate them, which is a conflict of interest. Uh, when they were promoting or approving bovine growth hormone, the person in charge of policy was Michael Taylor. Monsanto's former attorney. Monsanto was the one that submitted the bovine growth hormone. The person who was in charge of the review, Susan Sechin, she had just previously worked on the RBGH for Monsanto. Uh, Margaret Miller did research for Monsanto as a Monsanto employee on bovine growth hormone, and then it took a position heading an FDA branch that evaluated her own research. And Richard Burroughs, a veterinarian, told me that he tried to slow down the approval process because they were going to not do the needed research that needed to be done before releasing this animal drug, and then he was kicked out. He then sued the FDA, and in the trial, his boss admitted that they were trying to kick him out because he was slowing down the process. And then when they were forced to take him back, he was an expert at cows, so they put him on chickens because they didn't want him to see anything about bovine growth hormone, and they basically forced him to just push papers until he retired. Bovine growth hormone was kicked out of most American dairies because of consumer resistance, because people realized that eating uh, dairy products from cows treated with bovine growth hormone, you're ending up eating more pus, more antibiotic-resistant bacteria, and more IGF-1, which is linked to cancer, as well as more bovine 
growth hormone. Uh, in fact, a former Monsanto scientist admitted that he's, he knew of three other Monsanto scientists who were doing the safety testing on the milk from treated cows. And after they saw how much cancer-promoting hormone, they refused to drink milk unless it was organic. One bought his own cow. Thank you.